Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. And when I was a kid, we didn't have internet, the web, and we didn't have little cell phones carrying us around. So what we really did was we went outside and we played ball. And one of my favorite balls was a Spalding, the, the old pink ball that we played with all the time. So a little nostalgia here. I just decided I was going to create it. I have no affiliation with Spalding, and I hope they don't get upset that I use their ball, but I'm turning this circle right here, and this is what we're going to end up with, a Spalding bouncing ball. So let's get started. So the first thing I did is I went online just to find a picture of a Spalding ball, and this is the Spalding ball we're going to try and follow. So I am going to get a close-up of this, and we won't use this in the end results. We just want to show you the ball and the colors I'm using it for. So I'm going to take my ellipse tool and I'm just going to hold shift and create a ball. And let's make it about the same size. So let's see where we're at, uh, like that, and a little bit bigger, let's say right there. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. And what we're going to use it now for is color. So let's just get a close up here and look at the colors and we want a middle color from it we don't want the very light and we don't want the very dark so as long as this ellipse is selected you can just grab a click on the color and drag it over and I would say like maybe one of these colors right here and that looks good so let's go back out and we'll go we'll hide this for now we could start from scratch here, and I will, but maybe I'll just show you. This is what the Spalding ball looks like, so I'll put it right next to it. So we're going to try and get this to look like this. So just to be on the safe side, I always duplicate Control or Command J, and it helps me just in case I make a mistake. I'll hide the one behind. So now I'll take a soft brush. Make sure your brush is in your regular brushes, basic brushes, pick a really soft brush like that. And we will go to the paintbrush tool. I'm sorry, no, we will go to the dodge and burn tool right here. So we're going to go to burn. And I left my opacity very low, like 28%, 25 in that area. I just lowered it and, and my flow very uh, low so I can just keep playing a little bit. And my hardness is at zero because I picked a soft brush. See where these dark parts are? I'm going to start just swooping where the dark parts are, just like that. Very simple. And it depends on how much you want to go dark. And we're looking at maybe something like this. So I can even go a little bit darker, especially on the bottom. You want to be much darker than on the top. So I'm kind of swooping around. I'm moving off to the edge so I don't get so much on the edges like that. And I'm okay with that, I think, for now. So burn darkens things, which is this uh, icon right here. And I have it listed on shadow. And now if I press down, I will go to dodge and dodge lightens things. And I'm gonna light, lighten the midtones. So what I'm going to do here is near the top, I'm just gonna, Gently, I'll even make it bigger just to give it a little bit of a swoop. And you can get a feel of what's happening. And as I go toward this middle, I'm, I'm actually tapping a little bit just to give it a little bit more here. And then I'll just spread it like that. And if you feel like you did too much, you can go back to burn again and just tap some of the burn in. And that's pretty good. I think it was a little lighter here, so in this section, so I'll go back to dodge again and just tap a little bit over there. And I really think the top should be more. It's a personal opinion on that. So there you have the ball, easy enough, right? So let's see if we can get this logo off of here. So I did rasterize this and I'm just going to pull the logo off and it's, I can't put it on here because of course the background's gonna look a little different. So what I'll do is I'll try and separate. It's not an easy separation, but I will try to separate it from the lettering from the background. So I'll copy, Control, Command, C, paste with V, and I'm gonna pull that out. 
and we can hide these balls for now. So I need to somehow get the lettering out of here. I did try to select and it didn't work very well the way it is. So what I really think I'll do is I'm going to go adjustment, uh, black and white, and we'll start with that. And you know that the reddish pink is what we're trying to get rid of. So I'm going to just kind of pull that down a little bit like that and maybe even bring the magenta down. See, you can go that way or that way. And I'm going to do something like that so I don't see any of the outside letters. And then what I'll also do is I'll do um, a levels. Let's see, levels, if that helps. I'm not sure if it'll work. And yes, yeah, see if we can bring up the blacks. And that kind of gives us a good feel of what we need it to be. So what I'll do now is I will select that logo plus these two levels and I'll group them, control or command G, and then I'll rasterize it. So now that's, it's still on a white background. So let's move it over here and move it in front of the ball we just created. Oops, that's the top one. And as we've talked about in many tutorials, the way to make white disappear is multiply. So you just turn the uh, blend mode to multiply and there you have it. So you can do that if you want. You can round it a little bit if you want it to go. I'll just duplicate it to see if it works. Uh, copy paste. And what you could do is uh, warp it a little is what I'm saying. So you can do mesh warp if you want and kind of get a little bit of a roundness in there if you want like that, just to make it feel like it's going with, and I'll hit apply. And then that looks pretty good. And then the other thing that doesn't look natural is it's just floating in midair. So maybe I will just take another ellipse and go something like that. I will make it black. Both of these, by the way, have no outline. I didn't want to have an outline on them. And so I'm making it black. And I will move that behind the ball. And I can go to Effects, Gaussian Blur, and blur it. Something like that. And let's see, we'll bring the darkness up here. And I would like it just a tiny bit darker there. So maybe I will duplicate that. Control or Command J or copy and paste. Bring that in. Oops. Right on top of it. Let's see if I'm not sure if that'll work, but we'll give it a try and bring it up. And it does. It darkens just that area a little bit more. In fact, I'll even take some of that blur off make it even darker than that so that spot is much darker where the ball is and maybe we'll move this one down a little bit so there's one more thing I think that would finish this ball off a lot and so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to select the ball and I am going to go to live effects and I'm going to add noise because a ball is not as smooth as that. So, and I'm not gonna keep it monochrome. Monochrome would be just black and white. I wanted to take that off so I can keep some of the color. Now this is what it would look like if it was all the way, but I am going to kind of go like that because the rubber itself is not smooth. And if you remember the balls and especially all the bouncing, there's a little bit of texture there. And so now we can go back, see what it looks like. And now I feel like it looks like a real rubber ball. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe. And have a good day. Bye.